Hello and welcome to this tech tip from Will. In this video I will look at the minimum hardware requirements for installing and running Windows 10. Understanding what these requirements are will help you to identify which computers in your organisation are capable of running Windows 10. By the end of this video you'll have a good understanding of what is required to get Windows 10 installed and up and running. So let's get started. The minimum hardware requirements for Windows 10 are very similar to the hardware requirements for both Windows 7 and Windows 8. If you have computers in your organisation that are already running Windows 7 or Windows 8, there's a good chance that those computers are also capable of running Windows 10. Nevertheless, as an administrator you should still do your due diligence and check that the hardware in those computers meets or exceeds the minimum requirements for Windows 10. Windows 10 comes in two different architectures. The 32-bit architecture, also known as x86, and the 64-bit architecture, also known as x64. The 32-bit architecture is the older of the two architectures and has been around for a while. The 64-bit architecture is the newer standard and in recent years has really started to take off. In a later video I will look at 32-bit and 64-bit architectures in a lot more detail, so don't worry too much if you don't understand the differences just yet. In this video all you need to know is that Windows 10 is available in both architecture types and that the minimum hardware requirements for installing Windows 10 will vary depending on your chosen architecture. So what are the minimum hardware requirements for installing Windows 10? The first is the processor requirement. Windows 10 requires a 1 GHz or faster CPU to operate effectively. Although a 1 GHz processor will run Windows 10, in the real world you should aim for a faster processor if possible. Generally speaking, the faster the processor, the smoother Windows 10 will run. The next requirement is the RAM memory requirement. If you're planning to install 32-bit Windows 10, the computer will need at least 1 GB of RAM memory. If, however, you're intending to install 64-bit Windows 10, the RAM requirement is increased to 2 GB. Due to the architecture design of 32-bit, it's worth noting that 32-bit systems have a maximum limit of 4 GB of RAM. Even if you were to install more than 4 GB of RAM memory into a 32-bit system, the system will only ever see 4 GB. Considering this limitation, before you install Windows 10, ask yourself the question, do I need more than 4 GB of RAM? If the answer is yes, then you will need to install the 64-bit architecture in order to address this. Regardless of which architecture you choose, try to exceed the minimum RAM requirements where possible. Typically, the more RAM you install, the better. The next requirement to discuss is the disk space requirement. 32-bit Windows 10 requires at least 16 GB of free disk space for a successful installation. For 64-bit Windows, at least 20 GB of disk space is required. This may seem a lot, but when you consider the number of system and temporary files that are copied and reorganised during the install period, it's easy to see why this amount of disk space is necessary. Next is the graphics card requirement. Windows 10 requires a graphics card that is DirectX 9 compatible or later. In addition, the graphics card must be utilising a WDDM 1.0 or better driver. DirectX 9 was originally developed back in 2002, and since then newer versions of DirectX have come onto the market, including DirectX 10 in 2006, DirectX 11 in 2009, and DirectX 12 in 2015. Considering the age of DirectX 9, you would have to be using a very old graphics card for this not to be compatible with Windows 10. The final requirement is the screen resolution. Windows 10 requires a screen resolution of at least 800 by 600 pixels. This resolution has been around for a very long time, therefore you should have no problem in finding a monitor that supports this resolution. Understand the requirements I've looked at in this video should be considered the absolute minimum. 
Meeting these requirements simply means that the computer has the potential to install and run the Windows 10 operating system. You should know that there are other features to Windows 10, features like Hyper-V and Cortana for example, that will require additional resources to get up and running. In a later video I will look at the requirements for these features in more detail. Well that covers the minimum hardware requirements for installing and running Windows 10. In the next video I will look at how you can check that the hardware installed on your computer is actually compatible with Windows 10. This will involve looking at tools like the Microsoft Assessment and Planning Toolkit. I hope that you have enjoyed this video and found it helpful. For more Windows 10 videos check out our YouTube page. And be sure to subscribe to be notified of new videos when we add them. Many thanks and we will see you on the next Tech Tip.